All right, welcome to the channel. Today we're gonna to be painting some Adeptus Mechanicus. All the paints you'll need will be listed below in the description, so grab your paints, grab your toasters, praise the Omnissiah, and let's get into it. All right, for all your toaster loving fanatics, this is what we're gonna be painting today. We have got the Mars Forge World. For the most part, Admech are pretty simple because it's just a lot of core colors and we're going to be starting off with our foundation. We're going to be using some Mornfang Brown, Talarn Sand, Yashabti Bone, Corn Red and Mephiston Red. We're going to start off with a nice even foundation of Mornfang Brown across all of the red and cream components in the model. So just slap that down. Don't worry too much about it being 100% perfect or even having an even base coat. This is just acting as a foundation to help us achieve more saturated and vibrant colors throughout the rest of the process. Take some Mornfang Brown and Talarn Sand and create about a 50-50 mix and use this as the foundation for all of the cream areas in the cloak. Don't worry about painting all of these areas because some of them are quite hard to get to so just get the more prominent ones that people can see. Then grab some pure Talarn sand and apply that over the cream areas. You're going to look to achieve a nice smooth base coat here or a nice smooth coat with the Talarn sand. So do take your time with this one and if you need to apply a second layer. The mix of Talarn sand and Mornfang brown should really give you a good enough foundation that you can get away with one layer of Talarn sand. Mix some Yashabti bone into your Talarn sand and just start to highlight up the cloak or the inside of the cloak. Again run around all those edges that you can see at the bottom and in that split at the back. Again one coat should be enough here we're looking to achieve nice even and consistent layers and that's pretty much it for the creams. We're now going to get on to the corn red and apply a nice even coat of this over the red cloak components. Just over that Mornfang brown base should allow you to create a nice even foundation nice and quickly. It should only take one coat, but if you need to come in and hit it with a second, by all means. So again, you don't need to be too perfect whenever you're doing this. Don't worry about getting it over any of the other components. We can clean that up later if we need to. So now with your Mephiston Red, add a bit of water to it to get this kind of like thin layer consistency because we want to build this up over two passes to really establish our highlights. With the first layer, just block in all of those big areas and bold spaces that you want to highlight across the model. So all those areas that are upward facing, all those folds in the material, all those creases and all those details within the cloak. Again, you can see I'm working with quite a large brush at the minute. We've got a size 2 Artist Opus Series S. A larger brush does make this a lot easier because you can get more of it done in a shorter space of time. But if you want to use a smaller brush, by all means, go ahead and do that. So you can see we're blocking in all those areas. We're putting in some strong initial highlights. We're not too worried about smooth gradients whenever the, the paint is first applied because the Mephiston Red looks quite bright at first, but once it dries, it tones down a wee bit and you can start to build nice soft transitions. Come back in with the same consistency of Mephiston Red and look to cover a slightly smaller area. This will give you a more saturated red in the areas that you've coated twice and give you a nice subtle gradient between the colors. So just work around the model, again covering slightly less area, working towards a nice bright saturated red color. Make sure you get a nice strong red in all those areas that are facing up towards the light and then just pick out the rest of the folds and details. Now we're on to the metallic. So we're gonna start off with some exhaust manifold and we're just gonna apply a nice base over all of the metallics. This should only take one pass because these metallics are quite good for coverage. But if you've made any mistakes earlier on, you may need to come in with a second pass to ensure you get a nice consistent base layer for your metallics. Just quickly work around the model, pick out all those silver areas and all those areas that you want to be silver. 
Again, on the backpack, I'm not too worried about obscuring any of the details with this paint because it is quite thin. So we can just paint over all those like dials and gauges and anything else across the backpack whenever we're applying our base layers. We're going to block in the details in the gun as well here. So get the barrel, all of the, you know, magazine and any other parts across the gun. Whenever you're blocking in the shoulder pads, breastplate and the face, be quite careful not to hit any of those earlier stages that we painted. If you need to come back in and touch them up, just grab your previous color and apply it over the top. We're then gonna come in with some Nuln Oil and we're gonna apply that all over the metallics. This will help to dull them down a bit. It'll create some separation within the components and allow us to sort of capture that grim dark look within our Adeptus Mechanicus. So now I grab some Brass Scorpion. We're gonna use this to pick out some details within the metallics. So they're generally depicted as having a brass knee pad and also the filigree and detail within the gun is generally this color as well. It gives it that sort of steampunk look. So just quickly work around these areas, grab those weak connector areas or whatever they are within the tubing as well, around the face and any of the details around the backpack. I've chosen to add some additional brass coloring towards that incense tube and over those heat sinks around the top of the backpack. Just think it makes it look a bit more interesting. And then you can grab the trim around the breastplate and the shoulder pads too. So now we're gonna grab some Abaddon Black and we're gonna clean up any of our earlier mistakes. So we're gonna cover off all the tubing on the AdMac and just clean that up. One or two layers of Abaddon Black should cover off any of our previous mistakes. We're also gonna use this on the leather components in the backpack, so the strapping on those areas, and we're also gonna coat the trousers with a band black. Now at this point, your ad mech is pretty much done, and you could bring this to the table, no problems, but we're just gonna add in some additional highlights to help pick out some of the details within the trousers and the leathers. So just mixing some of your Yashabti bone in with your band black, we're just gonna highlight up some of these areas so get the leather trousers, the leather gloves. You can use this to highlight some of the tubing as well. So you have some variance between the other colors that we'll be using later. And then you can use this to apply some quick highlights to the leather components as well. So there's a couple of wee pouches here and there across the model. Mixing a bit more Yashabti bone in with your Abaddon black. We're just gonna add in a quick secondary highlight over these black components. So you can just quickly work through these just apply a slightly smaller highlight over these areas leaving some of that previous mix and the abandoned black showing in the deepest of recesses also just going to add some line highlights across the tubing just to help pick out some more detail we're not worried about grabbing each of the ridges because we're going to come in with a quick wash of non oil over those areas to pick out the details again grab those leather components around the backpack because it'll just help them stand out a wee bit more like I said, grab that Nuln Oil and just apply a quick layer of that over the top of all of the tubing sections. This will help to create that separation against the red cloak and also bring out those individual ridges within those areas. To add some pop color into our Adeptus Mechanicus, we're gonna be using Holdra Blue here. Start by applying a nice even base over some of the tubing components. So I've went with between the legs, the one on the side of the face, uh, the gems and I guess lenses and stuff on the backpack and on the face. Next we're going to add some Yashabti bone into our Holdra Blue just to highlight up the tubing. We're going to use some different colors to highlight up the gems. This just gives us a wee bit of variation in those areas and it also makes the tubing appear more matte because it has a duller highlight which I think looks quite cool because it gives you some variation in your pop colors. So just continue to highlight those up, adding a bit more Yashabti bone each time you want to improve or increase the value of the highlight. We're then gonna thin our Holdred Blue down so we can apply it almost like a wash into the recesses of the gun, the incense thing, and to the heat sinks at the top of the backpack. Whenever you're doing this, you don't need to worry about being perfect or right in the recesses because any overspill will look like OSL or glow. We're then gonna follow this up with some zinc white. I've chosen zinc white here over titanium white or another white because it flows a wee bit better. Um, I've thinned this down and I'm using a smaller brush here and I'm just applying that into those recesses. 
So this will act as a strong foundation for our next layers. So take your time whenever you're doing this, try to get it into the center of each of those areas. We're then gonna mix some zinc white in with our holder blue and we're gonna apply that over the zinc white. This will give us a brighter color, a more saturated looking color and a more intense color than if we just applied it over the holder blue. This just adds again an additional bit of pop color and a slight variation in our pop color across the model, but it helps just to make everything look a lot more interesting and it looks like you spent a lot more time on it than we really did. We're then gonna take some zinc white and holder blue in a layer consistency and we're gonna use this to start highlighting up the lenses and gems across the model. So whenever you're doing this, you wanna create a gradient from one side to the other the light's gonna come in and it's gonna come out the bottom of the lens or the gem. So we're applying this to the lower side of the lens. This way we create that nice gradient across the lenses and gems and it gives us that cool reflected refraction pattern that you see in all of the artwork. So progressively add more zinc white to your holder blue and apply smaller and smaller highlights to your gems and your lenses. Again, just aiming for that lower corner or lower side of each of the gems and the lenses. Finally, coming in with some zinc white, we're gonna add in that reflection point to the opposite side from where we've been placing our highlights. Whenever you're doing this, it's important to brace, take your time and ensure you're getting a nice steady application of the paint, just dotting the tip of our brush against the surface. So now we're gonna grab some of the purity seals across the model, starting from a base of corn red, we're gonna apply some Mephiston red over the top for our initial highlight, then mix some Yushapti bone in with our Mephiston red to give us that kind of uh, pinky waxy color and just add in some additional highlights. So for the parchment areas, just use some Talarn sand and apply that over the area for a nice even base layer. We're then going to thin down some Mornfang Brown and apply that over the top to tint the color and provide some additional detail. It just helps to add some age, wear and tear to the parchment. Finally, finish that off with some quick lines, dots, scribbles of a bad and black. None of that needs to be perfect, so just have at it and see what you come up with. So there are a number of like pressure gauges or gauges across the model. We're just going to apply a nice even layer of zinc white over those just to give the impression of that, you know, meter reading at the back. We're then gonna take some Evil Sun Scarlet, so we have a nice bright saturated red, and we're gonna apply this into effectively what will be the warning area in these meters. Um, so just pick a side or pick an area and just apply a nice even layer of Evil Sun Scarlet over that section. Finally, come in with some Abaddon Black and just pick out the needles and dials within each of the gauges. And that's how you do super fast gauges across your ad mech. Now I wanted to add some additional detail to the wood within our gun. So we had already applied a base of Mornfang Brown and then followed that up with some Null Noise. So now we're just gonna highlight those areas with some Mornfang Brown. I'm doing this with the tip of my brush, kind of dragging it back and forth across the surface to create that wood grain effect. Now I've just mixed in some Yushabdi Bone in with our Mornfang Brown. I'm basically just repeating the process, trying to cover slightly smaller areas but this gives you just a nice interesting look on the gun with very minimal effort. Lastly, I thought we could push the intensity of the reds across the model. So I'm taking some of that Evil Sun Scarlet and just applying an additional highlight all over the red cloak, leaving some of that Mephiston red layer showing. This just helps to add some more additional intensity and vibrancy to the reds and just helps to pick out some of those additional details in the areas. Again, don't worry about the massive color difference there is whenever the paints are wet it does dry a bit duller, so you will have a nice smooth transition between the layers. Again, use this to frame the face just to help bring some focus in towards that area and pick out any additional folds or details within the arms. And once you get them on the base, it should look a wee bit like this. If you wanna see how I painted these Mars style bases, there'll be a link thing up in the top somewhere. I think this is a fantastic result for our Mars Forge world and all those bright, vibrant colors will really stand out on the tabletop. Admech are super fun to paint because of all those nice interesting details across the models with the different gauges, different dials and different components within each section of the model. Let me know what Forge World you're playing and painting in this edition. Be sure to take some pictures and drop them in the Discord, I would love to see them. And praise to the Omnissiah. 
Hopefully you found that useful. If you have any comments, questions or suggestions for future videos, please drop them below in the comments. And if you want to take your painting to the next level, I have a Patreon that's focused around feedback and coaching. You also get access to exclusive guides and content. If you want to show me what you've been working on or what you've been using these videos for, please head over to the Discord and drop some pics into the whips or the completed projects. I would love to see what you've been doing. Just want to say thank you again for watching and I'll catch you at the next one. All links can be found below in the description and don't forget to like and subscribe.